Hello again, so just thought we'd give you a quick update on where we're at now. Uh, so most of the subframe is in now, so we've got these uh, longitudinals that run up the boat here and here, and then the bulkheads which are going across. Um, so we've chosen, well, it's called Nidoplast, Nidoplast, uh, there's also Firmahex, it's just the name of the material, so it's a composite board that has um, a honeycomb interior, and you can see here, which gives it its strength. They're quite flexible boards when they're um, not laminated. We then laminate the boards both sides and then obviously glass them in, make this frame up and then this will support the deck so the deck will sit on top of this and uh, we, then we tab it into the boat. So originally a lot of people make this out of timber. Um, this is just a lighter weight material so you're getting a better power to weight ratio um, on your fuel economy and things like that and also these can't rot so even if this becomes water bogged you know your, your boat sinks and these compartments well once it's finished they won't fill up with water but should they ever then the boards will never rot you'll be able to drain the boat out and um, you're never going to have any issues the only bit of timber that's going to be in the boat is the transom and then that way you know everything's as lightweight as possible and then it's all about longevity as well uh, so, so that's the idea um, so this is sort of still, uh, well, the Mark 1 version, you know, an old school way of doing things. Uh, what I've got to do from this point forward is create something called a strong back. So what that will do is um, this will be the same process, but it'll actually halve the time of what it takes to make this. All these boards have to be made individually. Um, everything has to be laminated. Everything has to be leveled up. The hull has to be leveled up so the deck height's all correct. Um, so the water drains off when you're at rest in the water or even on planing. Um, that you don't end up with a big water log up the bow which is going to obviously cause a lot of problems down the line um, so yeah we, we've got that from the Hellraiser anyway so we, we bought the Hellraiser moulds and the Hellraiser was based off of this boat um, and we should be able to take the strong back from that boat and um, graft it into this and it, it should just be the same fit uh, which would be nice and easy so other than that yeah next really we just got to finish off the transom up the end there and then um just to tab that in and then once that's in we're going to get this lifted out um, on a couple of gantries put onto a trolley and then we can carry on with the next stage which would be a fuel tank which is going to go in this compartment here uh, so that would be a 200 litre aluminium tank so really good for offshore fishing we'll show you that that's being made at the moment uh, so once that comes here then we're going to be sort of running some rigging tubes um, underneath the hull just to make it easier for cable laying and things uh, so as I say, all the hull layout's completed now anyway, this will be done, so hopefully, you know, next month or so we'll have a, a lot more progression on it. We've got the splash well made, the console's being made now, which is sit over the centre here, um, and then you've got the possibility to have, say, a T-top or just an open centre console, whatever you want to do, and then same with the transom. This one's going to have a splash well on the back, so you'll just be able to sit fit single or twin outboards on it, and then you've still got the option of the pod on the... Um, Hurricane 23 that's over there so you can extend this hull as well um, and, and have that way just so I mean there'll be a lot of deck space on this boat anyway but you'll have even more if you want to go that so yeah so I'll let you know once the fuel tanks are here and we get the rigging all piped up in there and just show you what we do um, with that anyway and just go from there cheers then